Well, you're watching action on the floor of the House of Representatives, where right now lawmakers, that's uh, Representative Rodney Davis of Illinois, are debating whether or not to recommend criminal charges, contempt charges, against former Donald Trump advisor Steve Bannon after he failed to comply with the subpoena in the investigation into the Capitol insurrection. Hello, everyone. Thanks for streaming with us here on ABC News Live. I'm Terry Moran, along with Kira Phillips. Uh, that vote on Steve Bannon is expected within the hour. ABC News congressional correspondent Rachel Scott is going to join us now with the very latest. So first, Rachel, uh, where are we on this vote? Um, mm -hmm. Could you spell out exactly what this means? Would Steve Bannon, uh, you know, some people think, would he be arrested right now if this passes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he could face up to a year in prison, Terry, but it will be up to the Justice Department to decide whether or not to move forward prosecuting uh, Steve Bannon, one of former President Donald Trump's closest allies. Democrats say that it has gotten to this point. They believe that Bannon Fuck has specific information Biden. into information into Fuck leading up to Joe the events Biden. on January 6th and the violence that unfolded Fuck that Joe day. Biden. We're just going to move over here since we're getting some people that are following us here. But they believe that Bannon should come and testify before Congress. They believe that he should also respond to the request for documents. At this time, he is refusing to do that. He wants the former president to sign off on that at this moment. So now they're moving forward with this full House vote today. It's obviously expected to, to move forward and pass. Uh, Congresswoman Liz Cheney, uh, one of the Republicans that are sitting on this committee to investigate what happened on January 6th, she says that what Bannon said leading up to January 6th is indefensible. She said that she encourages him Americans to go back and listen and she reminded members in the chamber today that they fled for their lives on January 6th Terry and Rachel of course the beauty of live television we realize uh, there's always a number of hecklers uh, outside the Capitol there to no matter what uh, the subject might be that's being debated on the floor so appreciate you just hanging in there with us you know we know the Republican leadership is whipping members to vote no today on holding Steve Bannon in contempt yeah. what do you think their rationale is here and what does it say about how the Republican Party is grappling with what happened on January 6th yeah, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy came out and said that this vote today is just simply invalid. He does not believe that Republicans in his party should go forward and support what Democrats are pushing here. The question from McCarthy, though, is does he believe that people who defy congressional subpoenas should be held responsible? Democrats obviously argue yes, that they should. But this is part of a larger effort here uh, by the Republican Party to really want to turn the page from January 6th. They are eyeing the midterm elections. They know that they want to get the House, they want to get the Senate back. Uh, we have seen a number of them, including Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, change their tune in the days and the weeks and the months following January 6th. They are eager to turn the page. And this is a party that in many ways has only grown closer to Donald Trump since the January 6th insurrection. I can tell you walking the halls, I've asked many Republicans if they think their party has a path forward, if they think they can regain the House and the Senate without Donald Trump. And the answer is always no. Well, as we've been listening uh, to members there debating on the floor, uh, Liz Cheney, Republican, stepped up just moments ago. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. Is, uh, she really uh, has been outspoken uh, against uh, president, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, and his fixation uh, on Congress to certify Joe Biden's electoral win. Let's take a listen. We are here to address one witness, Mr. Steve Bannon. I urge all Americans to watch what Mr. Bannon said on his podcast on January 5th and 6th. It is shocking and indefensible. He said all hell is going to break loose. Madam Speaker, there are people in this chamber right now who were evacuated with me and with the rest of us on that day during that attack. People who now seem to have forgotten the danger of the moment, the assault on the Constitution, the assault on our Congress. People who you will hear argue that there is simply no legislative purpose for this committee, for this investigation, or for this subpoena. In fact, there is no doubt that Mr. Bannon knows far more than what he said on the video. There is no doubt that all hell did break loose. Just ask the scores of brave police officers who were injured that day protecting all of us. Well, that was Liz Cheney laying the predicate for, as the lawyers like to say, justifying the subpoena of Steve Bannon, saying he knows a lot more 
uh, about what happened on January 6th. Then he's letting on. She's been hard on this from the beginning. She's a member of that commission. Rachel, I do want to turn the page, though, uh, to President Biden's big domestic spending bill, specifically yeah. that now whittled down social safety net package. Senator Joe Manchin, he's now saying there will be what he calls a, quote, framework. I thought we already had one a while ago, but with, quote, understanding <laughs> nuances uh, and nuances. And it sounds like it's not soup yet, but by tomorrow, he says. Does that seem possible? It sounds a little vague to me. What do you think? Well, it depends on who you ask, Terry, and it, it, you sound exactly right here. It sounds like we are repeating ourselves a little bit here, talking about this framework that Democrats were trying to obviously uh, reach weeks ago. I remember a point when they said they had a menu of options on how to pay for it, and obviously that's coming back into discussion again today. Look, the president says that he wants to reach a deal on this by the end of next week before he heads off on the foreign trip that he will be traveling overseas to. And de Democratic leadership, they're really amping up the pressure here trying to set this deadline for some type of agreement between moderates and progressives by tomorrow. Uh, that is going to be no easy lift. There are still a number of things that are left on the table here. Climate provisions for one, as I said, how to actually pay for this bill, whether or not they're going to raise taxes on corporations. All of that right now is still being debated between Democrats. And so it really does remain to be seen at this point whether or not they're actually going to get there. I asked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi about this earlier. She says they are on track. But, Terry, we have certainly heard that before. We sure have. Uh, but the deadline is looming ahead. Rachel Scott, congressional correspondent, mm -hmm. thanks as always. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.